Okay, for learning target 1E and 1F, 1E is, well, 1E and 1F is all about looking at the parent functions. And what, what do you do if the graph to the actual equation, what do you do to the graph if it, goes, if it moves up? What do you add or subtract to the parent function down? What if, it go, if the graph goes down, left, right, or reflection? So there's certain things you need to do, put on to the, add on to the, or subtract or multiply uh, onto the parent function to make a graph go up, down, left, right, reflect. So we're just gonna run through them quick. Uh, first is quadratic. You can make a quadratic function move up. Just write down the parent function as is. So y equals x squared. And if we want to make it move up, we'll just make it go, let's say, it's just adding. So you're adding a number. So you choose any number you want. I'm just going to write a variable. But you could choose a number, any number here. If I put plus 2, it would make the parent function move up 2. To move it, make it move down. You just do y equals, again, just write the parent function, x squared. And to go down, you probably already know, you're going to subtract a number. To make it move left, this is a little different now. To make it move left, you write, it's going to be y equals. And left and right is attached to the x. So we write that, to attach it to the x, we write it in parentheses, x and left, you would think left is negative, but it's actually opposite. So it is plus a number. So plus a, that makes it move left. And then close the parentheses and then put a square on it. So this, if I had x plus 4, that means that would pick the parent function, the quadratic the parabola, and move it left on the graph to 4. Uh, four. To make it move right, it's y equals x minus a number. And then square on the outside. So square on the outside, up and right of the parentheses. To reflect, so it's y equals, and to show a reflection across the x-axis, pretty simple. Right after the equal sign, just put a negative. And that'll make it reflect across over the x-axis. Uh, y equals x cubed is the same thing, so I'm just going to fill this in all the way across. So to move a cubic function up, you're going to move it, put plus the number after the parent function. Move it down, subtract. To move it left, you add in parentheses x plus a number. And then the cube is on the is an exponent on the outside. And then uh, x minus a number, move it right, put a negative right after the equal sign, and it'll reflect it over the x-axis. When it comes to absolute values, I'm just going to, instead of f of x, I'm going to write y. It's a little bit, it takes up a little less room. So the absolute value, sorry about that. So we have All right, now we got it. So it's y equals absolute value. So again, it's just very similar to the other others two that we've done. Write the parent function, and then put plus on the outside and a number. Choose any number you want. So that's an a. So plus five, it'll move the absolute value, the v, up five from the parent function, and. I'll continue to do this along. So I have y equals so y equals absolute value of x and then subtract 3 or subtract a. If you choose 3, then it would go down 3. Next one. So y equals so instead of the parentheses, you can treat the you treat we treat the absolute value bars like they are parentheses. So to move it left, you go x plus a on the inside of the absolute value. Close out the absolute value with the bar, 
And that's it. So to move the V left, however many you want. And we'll just continue. I'll, I'll write the rest and unpause. So we have X minus A inside of the absolute value bars. And that makes you go right. And subtract on the outside here. Right after equal sign, that'll make the V flip across the X axis. Um, so it'll be upside down V. Square root. So this is a little different. Square root will give us, again, I'll use Y instead of F of X, but it could be F of X. So to make it go to the right, so you just write, all these are the same. Write down for left and right, or for up and down, sorry, for up and down. Write the parent function, and then put on the outside after, so the square root ends right after the X. And then plus a is just that it's always on the outside of the absolute or a square root. So we have y equals square root of x. We want to make it go down. You subtract a number. So again, a is just a filler. That's any number you want. To make it go left, we have y equals. And we're going to go back to the parentheses. And it's always with the x. So underneath the square root, we want to make a move left. We're going to have x, put it in parentheses. And we're going to make it go, just like the others, plus a, plus a number. And close out the parentheses. You technically don't need parentheses, but it'll be a lot easier to see that it's underneath the square root. Otherwise, you need to make sure that square root is all the way across the x and the plus the number. Uh, so we'll fill this net rest in. So y equals the square root of x, put it in parentheses, and then minus a to go right. So minus a number. And close it up. And not a surprise absolute or square root so we write y equals the square root of x and you want it to reflect you're going to need to put a negative somewhere and you always just put it right after the equal sign and that'll reflect reflect across the x-axis cube root is exactly the same as square root just going to have a little three in there so i'll pause and i'll write them down and then you can so the cube root just the same as square root just you see these little threes here that signifies as cube root. Square root technically has a little small two there, but we don't write them. It's just an unread, unsaid rule that when you see the the, re, the root symbol, that if there's no number there, that's a square root. If there's a number there, and it could be a cube root if it's a three, or a fourth root if it's a four, or fifth root if it's a five there. It's just a tiny little number just to signify that this is a cube root. All right, moving on, log function. For log function, we have... So it's going to be very similar. A lot of you, you probably already picked up on it, but y equals, write down the parent function, log of x, after the x, after the parent function is written, then you write, if you want it to move up, you write plus whatever number it is you want to move up. I move up 5, put a plus 5 there afterwards, and then it'll move the whole log function graph up 5. So it's we have log to move down, log of x, and then it'll be minus, oh, minus a. I actually just saw in this cube root up here, this is a 3. That should be an a. We've, we've been using a's all the way along, so that should be an a. I'm right, moving on with to move it left. Where the x is, put it in parentheses, and put a plus a number. You can choose any number you want. I'm just writing a is because that's a generalized variable. The variable holds place just for a number. So, so that moves it to the right. When you put it in parentheses, you want to move it left. We will go minus. And reflecting. 
y equals, put a negative, and then put a negative right after the equal sign, and then log of x. All right, last two. Thanks for staying with me. I know this is long, but you might have been able to skip through. We have y equals to go up e to the x, and then on not in the exponent, but down below, just put plus a number if you want to move it up. If you want to move it to the or move it down, y equals e to the x, and that'll be subtract a number. Not in the exponent again. And then if you want to move it left, it's y equals e to the where the x is. Put in parentheses, so the x is the exponent. So x plus a number. And that'll move it left. If you want to move it right, you know, y equals e to the x as it in the exponent and subtract a number. And if you want to reflect this exponential function, just put a negative after the equal sign. E to the x. Again, e is a number. And the last one, rational. We have y equals 1 over x, and then after you write the parent function, on the outside of the parent function, not so not in the denominator, just on the after the parent function, just put plus a number, and that'll make it move up. Make it move down, you're going to subtract the number. To make it move left and right, to make it move left, Look where the x is. The x is in the denominator, so we're going to make that parentheses with the x, and we're going to add a number. So add a. If you want to move it right, so put it in parentheses, the x, and subtract a number. Now move it to the right. We want to reflect it, reflect this rational function. Y equals just write down the parent function, and right after the equal sign, to save some room there for a negative, and that'll make it reflect. So that's everything you need to know about E and F. Let's do a couple quick examples. So if I give you this equation, I expect that you should know how to draw it. So. One thing I, I do first is I will look at what reflections do we have here. So after the equal sign, I see a negative. That means reflect. It's going to get reflected across the x-axis. We'll do that first. Plus 2 on the inside with x. What does that mean? This should mean it goes left 2. And on the outside, after the parent function, what does that mean? The plus 1. Well, plus 1 on the outside means it's going to go up 1. So, how am I going to do this? Think about the parent function. It is a cubic function. So you need to know the parent function first, so it's cubic. So think about your points, 0, 0, 1, 1, and negative 1, negative 1. And we need to reflect these points. So if I were to reflect and reflect it across the x-axis, 1, 1 will get reflected to 1, negative 1. Negative 1, negative 1 will get reflected across the x-axis and actually go to negative 1, 1. And 0, 0 stays there because it's right on the reflection point or the line. Uh, so now thinking about the graph or moving these points, we're going to move them left to. So each point's got to go left 2 and up 1. So always reflect first and move left, right, up, down, whatever which way you need. So left 2, up 1. 
And then you think about what type of, or what's the shape of the graph? What is the shape that this will look like? Well, it got reflected. So the part that that was down here now becomes going up. The part that was reflected over here gets moved down. Okay, so 1F is find the equation from the graph. So this is the opposite. So here we have a graph and I'm going to look, we're going to look at what does this actually, what happened to make this graph? Well, it's a V, so it's absolute value. And I usually just write them down, my, all the reflect, or all the um, transformations. So it's an absolute value that got reflected. And then it got transformed two to the right and one down. It does not matter right, left, up, and down which order you go in. But if it's reflected, write it first. So to write this equation, we have absolute value, so it's y equals. I see a reflection. To do a reflection, right after the equal sign, put a negative. Absolute value bar x. And then we want to go to the right. So the right is the subtraction. So it's the subtraction with the x. So subtract. And we want to go 2 to the right, so minus 2. And then we want to go down 1. So down 1 is subtracting 1. Up and down is exactly how you think. Subtraction, right and left is opposite. So here's your equation. If you put this into your calculator or you draw this by hand, you will get this graph on the left. All right, that is 1E e and 1F. Good luck. Good luck.